Aerodynamics Guru's aviation partners is tapping inventive wing morphing technology to deliver performance improvements for aircraft. The company, which made its name developing winglets, has formed a joint venture with Flexis to apply the flex foil concept to a variety of aircraft. The technology involves variable geometry control surface mechanisms that can continuously reshape without the need for joints. The result is a surface that is more aerodynamically efficient while using less parts and saving weight. There's a number of different ways that the wing can be improved. It's kind of most like the bird. If you can get it to move and morph, you can do a lot of different things. Uh, one of them, if you look at the wing here, is the, right here, is load alleviation. This allows you to add, for example, things like winglets on airplanes without putting massive structure in. You can also take the flap sections here and you can make the flaps more effective and seamless. So it's very quiet and it's very efficient and it's very low drag. So the real key is to lower the drag and make the airplane more efficient. We think there's ways with the trailing edge, we think there's ways with the winglets, and we think there's ways with the leading edge from both ice protection and seamless leading edge slots. Flexis has been developing the FlexFoil technology for the past 16 years and has validated the concepts in NASA tests on a Gulfstream 3. Essentially what we're talking about is how do you design a mechanical system without any joints? Because what we do is that when you need flexibility in any, any application, whether you're thinking about a windshield wiper application where it has to be flexible to conform to the contours of the windshield or shape adaptive surfaces as an aircraft wing, we generally tend to put a whole bunch of mechanical parts and, and then combine them with joints intricate but very clever mechanisms to make it move. Now, to, whereas in nature, of course, there's no assembly. These are things that deform as a whole. So we want to come up with a way to design structures that, can, that are flexible and then they deform, but no joint. So it has, it's, it's, the, the, it's a jointless mechanism, so to speak. One distinction I want to draw is that, if you think about a lid of a shampoo bottle that you used this morning, there is no joint per se. There's a very thin plastic flexural hinge, and that serves as a conventional joint. So it is in that regard, it's, it's monolithic. It's a one-piece design. What I call that is localized elastic compliant design. But those kinds of designs may, will not work when you talk about aircraft structures that have to sustain significant air loads, the dynamic pressures, and also be able to sustain and those loads and, and work for many number of hundreds of thousands of cycles. So you need the flexibility of the shampoo bottle lid that I was talking about, but at the same time you need the strength to sustain the loads, and also at the same time stiffness to sustain external loads. So to do that, we want to have this compliance more or less distributed throughout the structure. So he, here is a simple example of what I'm talking about, a jointless mechanism. And you can see when I apply forces here, uh, you can see it change in diameter. And you can see all the beams that are bending. And all the beams are individually sharing the load. And the load is distributed more or less uniformly throughout the structure. So the stresses are very small, but you still get large deformation. That's the principle behind designing structures that can morph with very little stress. So it can last many number of cycles, but at the same time be able to deform to desired shapes. In fact, we have ideas and, and designs for changing the shape of a wind turbine blade. The outer 20% of the trailing edge of the wind turbine blade morph it so we can capture more energy and so on and so forth. So the principle works at all scales. We think we're probably still 12 months away from putting it on an airplane. What we're looking at is whether we put it on a commercial airplane in what we call mission adaptive profile to make more efficient in, in long range flight, or putting it on a smaller general aviation airplane to, to show how the technology works. So we're looking at it in a number of different uh, venues, but I think we'll probably settle on one within the next 60 days.